What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another video for you guys today. It is time for a preview and it's that point of the season again when the Premier League season is about to start. We're the last team to start on this Premier League season, we got the Monday night kickoff but... The last two times we got a Monday night kickoff, 14-15 and 16-17. It was also the two seasons we last won the Premier League. So, who knows? Might be a better season than we expect. But guys, this is the first match day preview of the season. It is Brighton versus Chelsea. We're facing them again from the friendly that, if you don't remember, I don't blame you for. That we had two weeks ago, which we drew 1-1 in and barely anything happened. But yeah, we're going to talk about both teams. We're going to talk about predicted lineups and thoughts about the game in this video. So if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that like button, press that subscribe button as well, and hit the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content on this personal channel. And yeah, it's Brighton versus Chelsea. It is one of the most anticipated opening day fixtures in Chelsea's recent history since at least 14-15 for us. The new signings are being rolled out for Chelsea. Well, some of them. There's still a couple that are going to be out injured, but we're going to talk about that later. And Frank Lampard is looking to hit the ground running on looks or what looks to be one of the most exciting seasons in Chelsea's recent history. I'm so excited to see how this new Chelsea team plays, how Kai Havertz and Timo Werner link up with the rest of the Chelsea players as well. And we're facing a team that hate facing us in Brighton and Hove Albion. Brighton have never beaten us in league history. They're 1-1 one, one draw against us in January was the last time they got a point against us ever in league history. I think the only time they've ever beaten us was back in 1933 and I don't even think that one counts as official victory. So Brighton don't like playing us but that is also a really jinxy as hell stat. It's one of those stats that you just don't want to hear before match day because there's so many times where you hear a stat like that and then the team just turns around and then beats you 2-1 or something like that. So means absolutely nothing it just means that we can go into this game a little bit more comfortable and in the case of brighton it's just chelsea again in it which we hope but with the new lineups it really should be that brighton are still a te decent team though we have to be honest they're a decent team with a couple of nice attacking talents and a very good defensive shape that we have struggled with in recent games like the 1-1 one -one draw that i just spoke about in january we weren't really that good in that game and Brighton really stifled our attack. Plenty of teams in the lower half of the league did that. I will say that first off. But Brighton and Hove Albion still managed to hold us back for the most part. We only got a goal off an Azpilicueta header. And in the reverse fixture in the 2-0 win against Chelsea, please don't be distracted by the scoreline in that game. It was still a very tough fought game for both of us. Brighton, we only conceded off a penalty in the second half. We only scored off a penalty in the second half of a Jorginho penalty before Willian was able to kill it off around 80 minutes in so last season Brighton showed that they were a test and they showed they were going to be tough and they showed they weren't pushovers and I think it's going to be the same thing again for us Brighton are going to come into this game they're going to stick about nine or ten men behind the ball whenever they get the chance for it they're going to try to hit us on the break but a big part of this game and why I'm excited about this is I want to see how this Chelsea team reacts differently to how Chelsea or last season would Chelsea last season if a team sits deep like that we're going to create plenty of chances, but no one's going to be on the end of it. It's not going to go into the back of the net. And with the turn in press, it just creates plenty of counter-attacks coming our way that our defence wasn't able to cope with. And it's probably going to be the same defence, because Thiago Silva isn't going to be able to play, because he's only just touched down in London a few days ago, and isn't fully match fit. So it's still going to be the same defence from last season. But I want to see how our defensive organisation has improved, because that was such a problem for us last season. So I want to see how we adapt well to doing that as well as defensively coping under not a lot of pressure because we don't usually have a lot of pressure put onto us we usually want to dominate in possession trying to create chances trying to do something in the final third so while the defense has less of the game focused on around them i want to see how they react when a quick counter attack turns i want to see how they react and see how if they play any differently uh, brighton have also done pretty well in the transfer market they've signed adam lalana they signed joel belt um, Joel Veltman. They've also kept in Ben White as well. And they also signed Lewis Dunk to a bumper five year contract. And we know a lot about that because Chelsea had put a little bit of interest in for Lewis Dunk towards the start of the transfer window. But as soon as he put pen to paper on that five year deal, that was put to bed. So Brighton are going to be a tough team for us. Not, t not, not doable, but it's still going to be a bit of a difficult side for us to face. I think. 
Also, with the Chelsea team maybe having to gel in together, there's also why the injuries might be a little bit of a bonus to us. Obviously, injuries are never a bonus, but it might be a bit of a positive that we don't have as many players to gel in as we would initially had to do. I played Brighton already before two weeks ago. It was a 1-1 draw that if none of you guys remember, I don't even blame you because it was an absolute drag. One of the biggest talking points out of that game for me was Timo Werner and his link-up play. A lot of people, a lot of rival fans have been saying that Timo Werner isn't going to get the same space in behind that he used to get before in the Bundesliga. But he showed to me in that game that he can do a lot more than just running behind defenders. His link-up play, his ability to drop deep and get more involved as a play in midfield was there for everyone to see. His passing range was excellent and I've, it just showed that he could offer a lot more to the team than what a lot of rival fans think that he can do. So I'm also interested to see if he can do the same thing again in the Brighton game on Monday as well. Hakim Ziyech was also a great talking point from that game because his passing and the delivery and the execution of those passes were just amazing. And it's a huge shame that we ain't going to see him play in the first match of the season as well because out of everyone that signed for us, he's the one that I'm most excited to see play because just the upgrade on that right-hand side, even in the friendly, was clear to see. And it's a shame that he got injured in that first match, but you got to hold your hands up to him and just say it's pre-season. Players are still coming back to full match fitness. Hakim Ziyech wouldn't have played football in a long time compared to half of the other Chelsea squad members who still had the end of season to play as well. So it's just a case of whenever he comes back from injury, we'll get to see his brilliance back into play. Let's go through the team news quickly. For Brighton, not a lot of injury news. Jose is Cuerdo's out and so is Christian Walton. For Chelsea, like we've already said, Hakim Ziyech is going to be out with the injury from the Brighton match. Ben Chilwell is also nursing an injury from back in his Leicester days from last season, which he still needs to recover from. So he's going to be out of that game as well. Thiago Silva also sadly won't be fit for this one. He's lacking match fitness and has also only just touched down in London either yesterday or the day before. So he wouldn't have fully assimilated with the defence yet. So it makes sense that he probably won't start. Maybe you see him come on in the final 10-20 minutes. I don't know, but I doubt you see him start in this one. Good news though, Christian Pulisic looks to be back after his injury in the FA Cup final and so does Cesar Azpilicueta. Christian Pulisic, like we've already said, we saw how much we missed him when he got injured back in January and we saw how much we needed him in the team post-lockdown. So it's great that he's just had this injury and recovered all throughout the postseason and is now back for this game now. And the same thing for Azpilicueta because with uh, Thiago Silva being out and one of his biggest strengths being his leadership, we need leadership in that back line again for this game so as Plaqueta can come back into, into this team and slot back in and give us the leadership that this team would have really struggled without we've seen it in games where you were playing without as Plaqueta and there isn't the same level of communication and the midf the defense just doesn't look organized and even with it not looking organized anyway it looks even less organized without him in the lineup so we need him in the lineup if Thiago Silva isn't going to be there Right, let's go into the lineup. I'm going to start off in goal, and in goal, we're going to start with Kepa. I know a lot of people are, going to, are probably going to think they'd rather start Willy Caballero, especially with how Kepa's season went last season. But I think with Edouard Mendy coming in, he's not coming in to just straight up replace Kepa, but he's being brought in to compete for his spot. And with that in mind, I think you can't just bench Kepa because if you do that, it just kills his confidence. If you're going to start a new season out and you're just going to bench him for our third string goalkeeper in Willy Caballero. I know Kepa's had a poor season, but I also think Kepa needs to prove himself and he deserves a right to prove that that Kepa from last season isn't the Kepa that we're going to always see. And hopefully we see more of 18-19 Kepa from this Kepa on Monday because I do think there's still a good goalkeeper in there. I know confidence was a huge problem for him last season, but I want to see how he goes off this one game because he's not just downright terrible. He's had good performances for us and I do want to see if he can try and replicate those performances again. So Kepa has a start for me. Right back, I'm going to go for Reese James. I think you're going to see a lot more game time from him this season. Last season, he came back to lockdown not in the best shape of fitness. So as Pilaqueta took most of the games on the right-hand side. But he started to come back into his own and had some amazing performances towards the end of the season. So hopefully we get to see him stamp down this position a lot more strongly this season. So I'm going to go Reese James at right back. As the two centre-backs, I'm going to go for uh, Kurt Zuma. And Andreas Christensen. I just slightly prefer Andreas Christensen to Rudiger, but I do think it's his final season to prove himself at Chelsea. Kurt Zuma, I've already said as well, I think he's going to be our main starter next to Thiago Silva, so he has to start in this game as well. 
Now, I've initially said on other previews as well that I'd go for Marcus Alonso at left back, but thinking about it now, we could do the leadership at the back and pace isn't really going to make much of a difference either. So, I'm going to put Aspel Equator in there instead because I think it'll just make us a bit more defensively solid. In midfield, I'm going to change the formation as well to the one I did on Blues Fans TV. I'm going to go with a three in midfield. I'm going to go for Kante as the lone DM because I think Frank Lampard has been trying to push for him to start in that position a lot more since the return from lockdown. And even if Declan Rice joins us or not, I think he's going to be starting in this position anyway. And I think Lampard's going to try and turn him into more of a lone DM. So he starts for me in this one. As a two attacking eights, I'm going to go for Mason Mount and Kai Havertz. Mason Mount's already key to the midfield in terms of how strong our press is. And Kovacic is also suspended. So Mason Mount will start in the middle for me next to Kai Havertz, who has to start. I'm not going to go too much into Kai Havertz because I spoke about him in so many videos. I can't be bothered for it. I just want to see the guy play so Kai Havertz starts. On the right, with Hakim Ziyech injured, I'm going to go for Callum hudson Adoy. On the left, I'm going to go for Christian Pulisic if he's back from injury. If not, maybe we have to see one of Mason Mount drop into the middle and Jorginho go into midfield. But hopefully Pulisic is fit to start, so he can start as well. And up front, I'm going to go for Timo Werner. And yes, guys, I pronounced it right. I realised I said it wrong so many times. I've never actually been... Well, I keep forgetting by the time a video comes around. I've seen all you guys' comments. I get like 10 each episode saying, pronounce it right say Werner so here it is Timo Werner up front has to start gunman clinical finisher gonna revitalize the whole attack so yeah Timo Werner has to start I'm gonna go for 3-1 Chelsea Burnley 14-15 vibes but I don't think we're gonna keep a clean sheet I do think we're gonna walk through Brighton though not even me trying to sound disrespectful but if we're serious about being title contenders this is the game where we stamp our claim and we make a mark but guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the comments I've made. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the chills.